In the example we did previously, we had no boiling point elevation. So how to deal with that? Well, let's jump directly in and do one example. So this uh, example, you have a feed 1.25 kilogram per second, uh, sodium hydroxide solution 20% at 38 degrees uh, to be concentrated to 50% in a single unit evaporator using saturated steam at 1.4 bar the pressure in the evaporator that is on the feed side uh, is 0 0.1 bar and the incoming uh, coming sodium hydroxide solution has an enthalpy of 130 kilo per kilogram and an outgoing uh, of 510 kilo per kilogram and we should calculate the steam consumption the steam economy and the required heat exchanger area if the parent heat transfer coefficient is 1.2 kilowatts per square meter and Kelvin. So let's jump in. Uh, boiling point elevation. Uh, during diagrams often often used um, because they're pretty straightforward. You then have to look up the boiling point of water uh, for the pressure you're working at. And then you go in. Uh, if, you, if that, for example, is 40 degrees, you go follow the 40 degree line and then go up to the content of the liquid, the L, uh, and then read uh, read the, the boiling point, the actual boiling point for this solution. Uh, and why is there boiling point elevation? Well, the more of the non-volatile component you have, the less you have of the water and thus the less you have of, water, uh, of the vapor pressure for uh, at that temperature. So then you need to increase the temperature to reach the boiling point since the boiling point is the temperature at which the wafer pressure equals the surrounding pressure. In our case, well, let's start making mass balances. We have F equals L plus V and we have F times XF equals L times XL. We're assuming no entrainment, so the vapor is totally free of liquid. Uh, we know that we had 1.25 kg per second and we had the composition, so we can calculate L as 0.50 kg per second, which means that V must be 0.75 because 0.75 plus 0.50 is 1.25. An energy balance, uh, well, we have steam of 1.4 bar. We look that up in handbook and see that the condensation temperature is 109.29 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have an enthalpy of 2689.98 uh, and of the vapor and an enthalpy of 458.42 of, of the condensate. And the difference between that is the evaporation enthalpy, which is 2231.57 kilo per kilogram. Uh, we need the enthalpy of uh, the vapor leaving, so HV. And that is the enthalpy at the boiling point plus the overheating. So we need to know the boiling point and uh, the boiling point elevation. Now, if you take uh, the handbook, that we have, you see that the boiling point is 45.81 and then we have to go to the during diagram. So 45.81, that's 40 there, that's 50 in between 40 and 60. So 45.81 is somewhere here. We follow this gray 45 line and come up to 50 and we should be slightly to the right of 50 there. So what uh, uh, sorry, slightly to the right of this uh, vertical gray line there. And what do we have here? That's 80, that's 100. And in between there, you have to have 90. So this gray line is 85. So you have slightly more than 85, so perhaps 87. That means that our boiling point elevation is 87 minus 45.81. So that's 41.19 degrees Celsius. We can get the enthalpy from a table for overheated steam at 0 0.1 bar. Uh, 
2591,67 and then plus the temperature difference 87 minus 50 so how far I want to go from 50 divided with the whole difference in temperature between these two uh, enthalpies so so this thing here is a fraction the temperature step I I want to go and the temperature step you have in the data and then I multiply that with the difference between those two enthalpies and I end up with an enthalpy of 2662.3 uh, so that's one version uh, the version is to take uh, the enthalpy at the boiling point plus the CP uh, for the gas times the boiling point elevation and so p for the gas is approximately one uh, about 1.9 you can like look that up in table the cp changes a bit with temperature and if i calculate that i get 2662.1 uh, approximately the same as 2662.3 so it seems okay i calculate the s using this equation up here so uh, we have the V 0.75, the L 0.50 and the F 1.25 and then I multiply with the respective enthalpy and divide with uh, the difference between HS and HK and I get a steam consumption of 0.94 kilogram per second. So that's our answer. And now the steam economy is simple because we have already calculated V so V divided by S becomes 0.75 divided by 0.94. That is 0.8 kilogram of evaporated uh, per kilogram of fresh steam used. Uh, I also need the area. To calculate the area, uh, we need to calculate how much energy is transferred. And S is 0.94. And then we multiply that with the difference between the enthalpy of the steam and the condensate and we get 2097.7 kilowatt and you see i checked the units here to see that it's correct and the area then uh, well we take this 2097 uh, and divide it with the, the the apparent heat transfer coefficient and uh, the temperature difference and note that the, this temperature here should be the overheated temperature because that's the temperature of the liquid coming out so that's this is the temperature difference if you put in here the temperature without the boiling point elevation i will deduct points on an exam so the area is 78.4 square meters so note that the delta t here above is ts minus t and t being the boiling point with the boiling point elevation so why do we have so high uh, steam consumption and poor steam uh, economy 0.8 when the evaporation enthalpy is the approximately the same on both sides of the heat exchanger shouldn't it be like that that the the energy given away by the steam shouldn't that be used for evaporation and if the evaporation enthalpy is approximately the same on both sides shouldn't the steam economy be one well, it should if we had a preheated feed, but we don't. The feed uh, only had 38 degrees Celsius, so it's not preheated enough. If we preheat it, we will get a better steam economy. Uh, so in this uh, exercise, I've given you uh, the enthalpy of uh, the feed and the liquid coming out. But where do we get those values? Well, it comes from this kind of diagram. The feed has 38 degrees Celsius and 20%. 20% is here and 38 is somewhere around here. And that seems to be approximately 130, so fine. Uh, the other flow, the liquid flow coming out has 87 degrees and 50%. 50% is over here. And we go up to 80% and find that up here. And that somewhere around 510 at an exam um, I might give you a diagram like this and then please mark uh, where you have read or I give you an equation and then 
be clear about how you calculated uh, these enthalpies.